Let the Ash Legion strike from the shadows. Let the Blood Legion die on the field. I am part of the machine. This is my story. Hey everyone, welcome to, I guess, what we're going to call a mini Guild Wars 2 podcast. If you didn't know, the beta started this weekend and we've had an opportunity to play it for about uh, two hours. In some cases, maybe not as long in the case of uh, some of the people who are joining me. Uh, Jim Mayberry from uh, the GameSpot live team. Hello, hey. Jim. How you guys doing? Good, good. And uh, Justin Calvert. Hello. Hi, Justin. How's it going? And Maxwell McGee. Hi, hello, everybody. Hi. So let's get, let's get into it. So... So yeah, Guild Wars 2 beta started. Obviously, we've all been kind of waiting for this for, for a little while now. It's, it seems like this game's been in development for quite some time, and for a lot of us, this is the first time we've had a chance to actually play it. I know that I've seen it at Gamescom. I've seen some of the things that they've been trying to do, some of the different things that they're doing that aren't like what other, other MMOs are doing. Uh, but in terms of just the beta, so just to give a quick overview, uh, what's playable are humans, Norns, Char, and is that it? That's it. Um, and among those, there I think classes are available for all of them. Yeah, it seemed like it. So what are what are sort of Maxwell? What are your sort of early thoughts on based on what you played so far? So the game for me definitely gives off a very Warhammer Online kind of vibe, mm -hmm. um, which I wasn't entirely expecting. I hadn't played Guild Wars One previously, but just jumping in there, like I played as the Char, and I was playing as a as an engineer. And the first thing you do is like you join this giant ongoing battle against a bunch of ghosts yeah so i had my guns i ran out there there were a bunch of other people it was a big sprawling battlefield and you just sort of you just you're just very organically welcomed into you know that uh that mission that's going on so it was like kill x number of ghosts go to this place help out this group of people fight this boss which was a giant statue and uh justin you you played that opening sequence as well because you were also char I did, yeah. I was pretty impressed with how quickly it just kind of thrust you into the action. I know, it just drops action. you right in there, like, and you just take off. Yeah, you go talk to the very first quest giver, and while I was talking to him, there's like fights raging all around me, and it's like, I, I shouldn't really be talking to you right now. I know, he's there's, just like, oh, by the this, way, there's this, a giant yeah, fight. There's a dude just, behind just me go, getting stabbed. Just go, just do like, it. Um, yeah, but it, it was great. They could just thrust you right into the middle of something. Like, there's no... No, I mean, it's obviously like a tutorial, but yeah. it's not like, go kill a couple of rats. It's like, no, no, the stuff is going down. You're right in the middle of it, and as soon as you kill these ghosts, you need to go kill this kind of boss guy. And yeah. uh, it was a pretty fun battle, actually. Um, yeah, and then once you once you finish that area, like the the rest of the the beta I played is very much in that style. So like the first quest giver I talked to after shooting all of the ghosts with my guns was like there are these three areas. There's one by the river, one over here by a scrapyard, and another one. And you just sort of go into that area. A little thing pops up. It's like mission begins in this area, and then it has a little objective like. You know, do X, Y, and Z, and it'll fill up the status bar. Once the status bar is full, you complete the mission, you're awarded XP. And Jim, you played as the Norn. What was the starting area like that? I mean, what was, what did it thrust you into, basically? Uh, so far, the Norn, uh, I didn't have quite as such a uh, battle epically raging on around me. At first, it was like I talked to this person, went down the road, talked to another person. And then it did thrust you into a battle, because once you talk to, once you trigger a few, I guess, of the story elements, um, which are pretty cool because they got these panels that slide up, and even then they say it's only a work in progress, but it's a neat artistic way to talk to the NPCs because it's their their very distinct art style comes into the screen and your character talks to the NPC. But uh, it shuffled me up this little high mountain pass, which was pretty impressive because off to the side there's like these statues of a raven, a bear, a wolf, and a leopard because I guess it, they're, they're definitely tying into the Norn tradition. But then once you got up there, it was the same thing. But only instead of fighting ghosts, I got to fight a giant metal-looking worm from something like Dune <laughs> that erupted out of the snow, and everybody was beating on it. And it's pretty cool. I mean, they definitely had a lot of like knockback effects and stuff like that. But uh, I went with a warrior, and he already has some sort of heal, which definitely already came in helpful. Um, something I was still getting used to was the use of a dodge button. That dodge, yeah, oh, yeah. Which... I've never done an MMO with a dodge. I, I tried Guild Wars 1, but not much. So working that into like a regular routine would be a little more different for me, but I'll just have to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, so I started in the human area, and the human area has been one of the ones that they've actually shown pretty often. So you're fighting the uh, Minotaurs, I think, um, that come rushing in through the city gates, and you have to basically fend off, and then this big golem-like thing emerges out of the ground and starts throwing stuff at you. But yeah, so 
their whole goal with that was basically make you think that you're participating in this epic war like right away as opposed to like starting off fighting rats and i think the game does a pretty good job of that the beta does um but what i thought was interesting is just kind of what happens immediately after that in terms of like okay now that you're in kind of the more typical aspects of what an MMO is, like how do they handle that? And what I thought was interesting is how much more organic it feels than something like World of Warcraft. Granted, I'm not, I am not a MMO fiend, I guess. Like I played EverQuest, I play WoW, I play Old Republic, but I'm not like super hardcore about them. But what I what I like about this game is that like I feel that things just are kind of always happening around you. And that they're not being triggered necessarily. I mean, they are being triggered, but the way that they're presented to you, it just feels so much more natural within that world. Um, One you know. of the things I really liked was the way, and they did this in the first Guild Wars as well. But like, you go into a certain area, and like you'll be you'll be working on a mission. Some parts will take place in the game world at large with all the other players, and then other parts will just be instants out. Right. And then um, the and for me, I was playing as the Char and. We should go back and talk a little bit more about character creation. But during right. character creation, I got to pick out, like, who was your childhood buddy? And so I made my selection, you know, didn't really think too much about it. And then when you break off into these instance areas, well, there's your childhood buddy. And he comes running up like, hey, good to see you. We need to go collect these plans or collect these parts or whatever. So you go, you do a couple of quests with him. And it's a little more, like, focused and directed since, obviously, it's instance just for you. And then you pop back out and you continue your mission in the world at large. I really like that back and forth between instance and regular gameplay world. Yeah, actually, I mean, I think that's one of the things that really interests me about Guild Wars 2 in general is that it makes it sort of feel even more so than Old Republic does that you... It has, like, a single-player kind of feel to it with the instances that are catered exactly towards how you built your character and things like that, which I thought was interesting. And but, the uh, fact that your character... Well, I guess Old Republic does this as well, but the fact that your character actually speaks and has a voice... Yeah. Rather than just like the sort of implied non-talking that MMO characters usually do, I think that that adds a lot for the just like the single-player experience, like you were saying. What are your guys' impression in terms of just how? Because I noticed that you know skills, at least in the early stages, just kind of unlock as your as your per, uh, as your XP bar was climbing. Like, yeah, it, it would trigger little things along it. It seemed pretty neat because it gave you like a little bit of like a glimpse as to what was coming, and maybe like, oh, that's coming next, and a little incentive to keep fighting. Um, but yeah, I also there's a couple other skills like on top of the action bar, which I didn't quite figure out how to. I mean, I'd obviously click it, but I know when I I played, I got to play around with the engineer at a much higher level like late last year when mm -hmm. I went down and visited the developer. And so, uh, for me playing as the engineer, the, that top bar of skills was where I had these equipment packs. And so there was like the bomb equipment pack, the trap equipment pack. And so I, when I would click on one of those, it would change the active skill bar. Now at the bottom, it would switch those out with like. Here's five different types of bombs or five different types of traps, and so you could you could jump around between those different sets of equipment. So that's one example of a use of. Because there's like bomb. a whole action bar of skills set up with like depending on what weapons. Yeah, de have, de right? depending on what weapon you have, you it, it shows you a, a list of skills, and then as you use that weapon, this the skills gradually unlock from left okay. to right. Yeah, I noticed that because I I started as a ranger with a, an axe, mm -hmm. and then like a blue sword dropped, and as mm -hmm. soon as I equipped, it was like all my skills got reset. And then yeah. as I started learning those skills, they were pretty yeah, different. I, actually, I started with a ones. single pistol. I had three skills, and once I by the time I unlocked all three of those, I'd found another pistol, so I equipped that, and that unlocked two additional ones for a total of five. And then later on, I switched over to a rifle, and I started back at the at the very first skill. See, they must not have loot enabled on mine, because all I got was, like, gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing, too, is that, uh, you know, just in terms of the loot that it was dropping, it was actually pretty valuable for me almost right away. Like, so I was playing as a human thief, and so I can use a dagger or... I can dual-wield daggers or a dagger and a pistol combo, and what's cool about the dagger-pistol thing, it opens up, you know, a combination of those... Of like ranged items. and melee. Yeah, so like I can shoot, uh, I can fire a blinding shot and then do the thief's um, like typical stabby stab move, uh, which is actually really cool. And I think, so you know, we have only been playing this game for about two hours, and I think sort of things we still have to jump into are sort of the team up attacks, which are a big element of this game. Uh, obviously, there's world versus world stuff, which is also planned for the beta this weekend. Uh, gosh, what else am I? Something else that was kind of a neat touch was uh, just the items that are scattered around the world. So I noticed like when I was in the scrapyard, there's like discarded cannonballs and iron rods and stuff. You can run up 
pick up one of those and it gives you it gives you a whole new set of skills based on that item right. but it, the item will break after a couple of uses so it's just like this short duration power up that you can you can just find littered about the environment what are your thoughts on just how it looks at this point and and where they're going with their art and that sort of thing i was in uh, the art is definitely neat because it's got an artistic flair with like the almost uh, shading comic-y look to it but yet there's also I mean, the world does remind me a lot of the Warhammer style. Um, you know, the way the ground textures and stuff seem to be. Um, it's pretty smooth, and there are some nice vistas and stuff off in the background in my zone. Um, it definitely seemed pretty cool. A lot of neat looking armor and stuff like that, which for me is, you know, that's pretty much all it's about. <laughs> <laughs> and something that I that I noticed too is just like what we were talking about earlier with those cutscenes is that they seem to really want to emphasize your character. And like really show off your character when they get the chance, because the model that shows up in those cutscenes is actually like super detailed. Yeah. Like, in, you know, I don't know that it's even the same model that's running when you're doing normal gameplay stuff. But and when you're in character creation too, something that you know, you can go in and just like change all the colors on your outfit right away. You don't have to save up and buy a bunch of special dice. So that was a nice extra touch. Yeah, and uh, another thing I thought was kind of interesting, just in terms of um, you know the waypoint system and, and things like that. Uh, at least in, when I was playing, it's the game definitely encourages you, encourages you to jump around if, if you want to. Um, you know, you spend a little bit of money to jump from these waypoints within the city or within the grounds right outside, and it's it's neat actually. Like I'm, you know, in terms of someone who's trying to rush through and play for a few quick hours, you know, it's it's was definitely helpful but it's one of those things too where i can see using quite a bit just because i know there are times when i've been playing wow or things like that like i don't want to necessarily travel through these places and take as much time as it typically does just to walk through and all that but um i don't know any sort of closing thoughts on what you guys have have played so far any any sort of concerns any sort of anything that you're looking forward to maxwell i mean again i'm not i'm not a huge fan of mmo but if if there ever was one that was that was going to get me into that genre, it would probably be Guild Wars 2, just because of the the, the focus on the single player experience and building a, a fun sort of structured uh, I hate to use experience again, but experience for for that type of player, yeah. which is definitely what I am. Justin, in your ten minutes, so uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm the MMO guy who's obsessed with pet classes, yeah. always have been. So uh, playing as the ranger. Uh, in character creation, I, get, I got to choose one of three pets. Uh, I think well, one was basically a scorpion, one was a, a drake, and the other was uh, it's basically like a leopard or something. Yeah. I, forget, I forget what they actually call it. Um, but I, So I chose that, and then I noticed uh, at just like level one and two, its, it's description is like young mm-hmm. leopard, whatever they call it. Uh, so I'm looking forward to just seeing how that thing evolves. Like, does it, does it grow up? Can I get other rare pets? I mean, that's the... I kind of live for rare pets in these games, so... <laughs> you were also playing as a cat person yeah, who was, owned a smaller cat. Yeah, the char look kind of... I mean, you know, they're quite cat-like, and yeah. I definitely made mine look very tiger-like with the, the markings and coloring that I gave it, so it was kind of weird then that he had a pet cat. <laughs> 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 yes, Jim, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is the only genre I really play, so I've, I've been looking forward to this one. I kind of almost wanted to not see it here, but, you know... Just because that's the one niche I like to say for myself of this genre, but it's I, so far I'm pretty impressed. It's uh, it was a lot of fun. The warrior really visceral, had a lot of quick jumpy animations, getting into range and you know slicing up stuff with his sword. And so far, uh, I, I I thought it was pretty fun. It's still it's still hectic because I think whenever you start an MMO, there's just so much going on, and even if it's the same, it's still a little bit different. And it's it's you know you're entering a new world and how easy that is is, uh, you know kind of a testament to the beginning levels but so far it seemed to work out pretty well cool well that will do it for our super super quick look at the guild wars 2 beta Uh, stick with GameSpot all week long we'll have more coverage on the game and as the beta progresses through the coming months see you soon we can't go on living our lives in fear i have to fight i have to make a stand This is my story.